Why, hello again, and thanks for meeting me in PowerPoint. So let's jump into uh, t-test and the logic of t-testing. So I want to kind of go over a couple of examples here. So we all know what the population distribution is, or at least we should have a good idea, right? So that's the the mean and standard deviation of a population, uh, and the and the population of scores on a particular outcome, right? So what a one what a one sample t-test does is it asks the question, what is the probability that a sample distribution is significantly different from the population distribution, right? So if we take a sample, is that distribution and the mean and standard deviation of that distribution significantly different from the population? And we'll jump into what significantly different actually is here in a minute. The independent sample test, on the other hand, asks the question, what is the probability that sample sample 1's distribution is significantly different than sample 2's distribution, right? So what we're doing is we're taking the mean and standard deviation of both sample 1 and sample 2 and testing those and asking what are, what's the probability that these are significantly different from each other. So let's jump into our running example. So we have this research question here. Let's say I have this research question of do students in my stats class have better grades than students in my research methods class, right? So we just talked about this research question. This is an independent samples research question, right? Because we have samples from my stats class and a sample from my research methods class. Now let's just make up a little bit of data here. And so let's see, if, let's say for example, and this is hypothetical data, that my stats students, a random sample of my stats students, let's say 14 of them, have a mean of 3.52 as their GPA, a standard deviation of 0.31. Now let's say my method students have a mean GPA of 3.21 and a standard deviation of 0.22, and there's 11 of them, right? Um, so as you can see, the stats students are higher, their GPA is higher than the method students, but the question is, are they significantly higher, right? What's the probability that these two groups of students are significantly different, or I should say, the stat students significantly higher uh, on their GPAs? So let's run through this, and let's, let's start figuring out how to calculate this. So there are several steps in conducting t-tests. Uh, so step one here is making assumptions and meeting test requirements. Step two is stating null hypothesis. Three is selecting sample distribution and critical region. Four is actually computing the test statistic. Five is making a decision interpreting results, right? Um, for step one, these are our basic assumptions of a t-test. And so we have to meet these assumptions, so we're not going to talk about these every single time. These are assumed, and we're making the assumption that we're making the right decision, right? So for a t-test, we need to make sure that we're doing random sampling, right? We're doing some sort of probability sampling. We need to make sure that the dependent variable is interval ratio, and we assume that the sampling distribution is normal. Now, if you remember back about sampling distribution, we always make this assumption about data. Right, So these are the assumptions we make. So we have to make sure at least our sample is random and our interval ratio um, variable is the dependent variable. All right, So we're going to make these assumptions for all three types of t-tests. Now let's move back to our research question here and talk about the null hypothesis. Um, so you have a hypothesis and a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the opposite of your hypothesis. So let's look at a research question here. Do students in my stats class have better grades than students in my research methods class, right? So our null, or excuse me, our hypothesis here, which is identified by this H sub one, hypothesis one, would be that the mean of group one, which is my stats group, is greater than the mean of group two. Right? And so the way that we would say this in typical English is that the mean of sample 1, the stat students, is greater than the mean of sample 2, the method students. This brings us to our second step, stating the null hypothesis. So what we need to do here is we need to state the opposite. Now you may be wondering why would we want to state the opposite. 
Um, statistically speaking, and this is something just to kind of put on your back burner, not something to um, to to sort of really focus on. But in statistics, we can't ever prove anything. All we can do is disprove something. So you may be wondering what the point of statistics is, uh, and that's a fair question. Um, the idea here is that when we gather a lot more data around this research question, it leads us to stronger conclusions, right? So we state the null hypothesis because we can't ever prove the hypothesis. All we can do is disprove the null hypothesis. And that's the point of stating the null hypothesis. So when we run our analysis, we're trying to disprove the null. We're not necessarily trying to prove our hypothesis. We're providing evidence for it, right? So let's state our null hypothesis. And so this is identified by our h sub 0 um, as the null hypothesis. That's our notation for that. And as you see here, the way to state this in uh, plain language is that the mean of sample 1 is less than or equal to the mean of sample 2. Right. So we want to make sure we're gathering everything that is the opposite of our, our hypothesis. Now what we want to do is move on to step three, which is selecting the sampling distribution and establishing our critical region. And so our critical region is the point at, in the distribution at which we reject the null hypothesis. Right, so you might remember this from confidence intervals where we state the confidence interval and it could be 90%, could be 95%, could be 99% right and what we're doing is we're extending or we're making those um, those those intervals wider right we're making that range wider the um, the more confident we get and so it's what we call is this uh, this is the alpha level or p-value and so let's just kind of talk about this real quick so for a one sample t-test the one sample t-test always uses the z distribution and the reason for that is is because we have the population statistics, right? So a one sample t-test isn't often used and that's because we don't often have the population parameters. If we did, then we would do one sample tests more often. Um, but because we do have the population parameters, we always use a z-distribution. Now for two sample tests or paired sample tests, we will use a t-distribution. Now the t-distribution is a little bit flatter and a little bit wider than the z-distribution. Um, and that is when our sample sizes are small. And by small, I mean less than 120. But when our sample sizes get larger than 121, or 121 or larger, then our distribution is identical to the z-distribution. So we'll talk about this in a second and talk about degrees of freedom. So here when we're selecting our sampling distribution and establishing our critical region, we're establishing that sort of level of confidence that we want to go to. And so our when we move on and look at the, the T distribution, let's say that we are selecting an alpha level of 0 0.05 or um, we can think of this as sort of 95% confidence. Um, we have a one-tailed and a T-tailed test. The one-tailed test is stating directionality. The, t the, uh, the two-tailed test, excuse me, is not stating directionality, right? So in our case, we are stating directionality. We're saying group one is larger than group two. And so we look at a, at a one-tailed test here. To identify our, what we call the T-critical region, this is um, analogous to our Z, our Z score, our Z distribution, um, we use what's called degrees of freedom. Right? And so degrees of freedom is identified by this, uh, this equation here, where, N1, where it's N1 plus N2 minus 2. Uh, and so in our case, N1 is the sample size of group 1, N2 is the sample size of group 2, minus 2 is just minus 2 because we have two groups. And um, what we find is we have a degrees of freedom of 23. So if you find a T... Uh, a, a T appendix or a T chart like you have for the Z chart, um, what you'll find for the one-tailed test is that we get a T critical of 1.714. And this is the place where we are checking our T observed value against this value. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. 
So now let's jump out to the actual calculation of the test statistic. So it seems like maybe we've spent a lot of time on steps one through three. Those actually go pretty quickly once you get into this and actually um, stats packages like SPSS um, or Excel or Stata or many of these other stats packages um, will give you that test statistic and actually tell you the alpha level um, at which your T statistic is beyond. Uh, and you'll see more of this in, in Excel work in my Excel workshops. And so let's look at the basic formula here. So this is the exact formula for all T tests um, for independent samples, one sample and paired sample. Um, the notation looks slightly different because in some cases, like the one sample case, you'll have the population parameters um, where in independent samples you don't, right? So I'm using the independent samples t-test with a small sample size for this. Um, so we have three basic components here, right? We have the mean of group one, which is our stat students. We have the mean of group two, which is our methods students. And then we have what's called the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Now this calculation looks fairly simple. However, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, we have to calculate that, and that gets fairly complex. Um, don't let that worry you. It's sort of a, a plug-and-play type of situation. So as long as you're, you're using your, um, your operations, your order of operations, you'll be fine. And so we'll walk through this. So again, we have our stat students mean of 3.52, method students mean of 3.21, and so our step 4a, we need to compute our observed deviation between the means. Now this is simply the deviation or the difference between our two means. So we'll use our, our equation here. This is going to go in the numerator of our t-test formula. And so we have x bar uh, sub 1 minus x bar sub 2. We plug in our 3.52 and our 2 our 3.21 and we get a deviation score of 0.31 right so you want to save this put it aside because we're going to use it in a second 